The hearing is in the matter of TCD 003-2020 before Chief Justice Zaki Azmi, His Excellency Justice Shamlana Sawalhi, and Justice Robert French, and is being held by way of video conference. Any orders or directions made after or during the course of this hearing will be issued by the registry in Dubai on the judge's instructions. The claimants' appellants are represented by Onoma FZE. Lead counsel is Mr. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Fisher, QC. The respondents are represented by Clifford Chance, LLP. Lead counsel is Ms. Annalise Day, QC. Yes, we were discussing about, I think uh, I will leave my learned brother, uh, Justice French. We have a, a few questions to raise, clear, some clarification to seek for, but uh, I think I will leave it to, to uh, Justice French. Robert, you want to raise those things yeah. just now? I just wanted to clarify precisely what we're doing today. Uh, as I understand it, uh, uh, although the uh, electronic bundle appears in the original jurisdiction folder of TCD 003, it's really in the appeal CA 012. And it's what we sometimes call a notice of contention, uh, the respondent's notice. In other words, seeking to uphold the judge's decision on uh, grounds other than uh, those which uh, supported the, uh, the outcome. And as I understand it, uh, this is really by way of a hearing of the respondent's notice uh, as a preliminary issue in the appeal. Uh, that is CA uh, 012. Um, and uh, that the, argue, the respondent argues that it can run this uh, under uh, Rule 4475. And the appellants say um, it's really a, a separate appeal and you need permission to appeal because you're challenging one of the judge's findings as to recoverability. Um, and uh, obviously, if the uh, the argument seems to be that if the respondent succeeds in its notice, then the appeal goes away because the appellants cannot succeed. If the respondent doesn't succeed in its notice, then the appeal um, will be heard at the later date in relation to the matters raised by the appellant. Uh, the respondent's arguments. Is that correct? How we how we understand is that. How is that is that the is that council is, is that how it is did you hear what uh, justice french said just now this is application by respondent to challenge the notice of appeal or rather the grounds we are not very clear well wait, wait. can can you confirm or otherwise to what Justice French had just said. Uh, I, if, I, if I may, from, from our, our perspective, we'd understood this to be an application by the respondent um, to uh, raise a, an issue, a challenge to one of the judge's findings. Um, and we'd understood that they were also seeking to say that actually in any event, they, they from where they see it, they don't think that they need to get permission. They can run it anyway. Um, yeah. And the, the outcome of this uh, will be either they can raise the issue or they can't, whether it's uh, through leave or otherwise. Um, if they succeed, then we will be arguing the point um, in a further hearing, a substantive hearing. Um, and if they fail, uh, then the appeal will proceed, but simply it will be our appeal on the limitation point. Is so that right, Ms. Annalise? Ms. Annalise, is that yes? All right. Well, we we obviously okay. say we obviously say that the appeal should be dismissed on because the judge was correct on the limitation grounds. We have raised in the alternative if the court was to allow the appeal on the limitation grounds, then we would raise this issue in relation to recoverability of loss and would say that the court should still uphold the decision to dismiss this claim on the basis of limitation, uh, on the basis of recoverability. There is obviously a dispute between myself and Mr Fisher as to whether we need permission to appeal, but we say even if we do, the court should give us permission to appeal. So that's that is how we'd understood it. I think Justice French put it slightly differently in that he was saying that if we are right on this, then we wouldn't go on to the substantive appeal. 
and I guess we're in the court's hands on that. The court has given permission, as we understand it, for the limitation arguments to proceed. Um, but obviously, uh, we're prepared to deal with whatever is helpful to the court today. Well, Ms. Day, perhaps I should just um, uh, clarify my understanding, having read the submissions from you on the skeleton uh, 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 argument and the respondent's submissions in response to the respondent's application for permission to appeal, was that we were going to be dealing with the merits of the respondent's point today, coupled with the question whether that point was properly raised by way of a notice or by way of an application for permission to appeal. I mean, that's a procedural question in a sense, yeah. is a threshold yeah. question, I guess. Yeah. But if you've only come here today prepared to argue uh, on the question, uh, the procedural question, um, should we be, can we be heard on a notice or do we need permission to appeal? And that's a much shorter argument. I'd just like clarity on what you're seeking to do. Well, we, I mean, I think we're prepared to deal with both today in depending on how the court wants to deal with it. We obviously need to deal with the question of whether we need permission or not. And then secondly, whether we should have permission. Um, if the court then wants to decide the issue of recoverability first, then we, we would be prepared to deal with that today. Um, but we had we had obviously raised it as an alternative to the limitation points that are run um, because yeah. we say if that if those are upheld logically we don't even get on to these issues but if the I court wish yeah. if the court wished to deal with it the other way around certainly i'm prepared to deal with that today it's because obviously you look at the same issues about whether there's a real prospect of success so i'm in the court's hands really in terms of how you wish to deal with it certainly today we definitely need to decide the procedural issue and to a degree we need to potentially look at the merits uh, in terms of real prospect the, the way I understand it, the way I understand Sorry. it, you appeal against an order, not against the reasoning. Here you are sort of appealing against the reasoning of the judge. Can't you raise that as your argument during the appeal proper? You question the reasoning of the judge, or correct, correct. You know, we don't, we don't appeal the results. We say, come what may, this this claim should remain struck out, which is why we say we yes. don't need permission. But obviously, Mr. Yes. Fisher has said you do need permission, um, and there doesn't seem to be any authority in the DIFC directly on this point. Um, there is some authority in England, but we say that yes. what we if 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 we'd sought to appeal and they hadn't sought to appeal, we would have been told to go away. It would have been a total waste of the court, court of appeals time because we won. The action got struck out. You're right. Okay. We're dealing here with reasons, which is why we say we just seek to uphold the result, but with different reasons. Um, the, so the we, question, we, um, sorry. The question. Normally, you raise that in your argument, in your argument, in your argument, uh, responding to the appeal, we say that the judge was right in dismissing the, the claim, but we don't agree with his reasoning. And the Court of Appeal can, can also say that we agree with the conclusion, but we don't agree with the reasoning. But to take it as individually, as a separate matter on appeal, uh, this is very, very very technical, a separate met, a separate application on the notice of appeal. Is that the right way? Assuming that the, the, the appellant doesn't file an appeal, what can you do, Miss Annelies? And let and Lies and Lies. Nothing because we wouldn't do? we wouldn't be seeking to we yeah, exactly. That's yeah. our but that that's our point. That's how we raised it. We said in the alternative we seek to uphold the judge's decision for different or additional reasons only if we lose on the limitation point. Um, so that's how we'd run it. It's the claimant that said you need permission because this is a separate decision and we've said, no, it's not. So our, yeah. our position is that's exactly how we are entitled to run it. But obviously the claimants raised this issue that we need permission. May, may I please you, may, may I on yes, uh, Mr. behalf of the claimants, um, make uh, our position clear about this hearing. Um, we'd understood and we have come ready to uh, argue 
uh, procedural matters. Uh, the procedural matters being uh, whether or not there should be permission or leave given to the respondents to raise uh, the ground of appeal uh, that they wish to raise. And secondly, um, alternatively, um, whether they need permission or not um, to raise it. Uh, we have not come prepared and we have not uh, addressed the substantive issues. Um, we'd understood that there was going to be uh, a, a, an appeal hearing on the issue of limitation. And if um, the respondents are successful today, then at that hearing, there will also be uh, a hearing about the recoverability point. Um, if they fail today, then the substantive appeal will proceed on the, on the limitation point alone. Um, we are not in a position and have not prepared our arguments and not set out in skeleton arguments any detail or in the case bundle, we haven't got the law here. Um, to argue any of the substantive issues. So I'd like to make it absolutely clear um, that uh, we are not ready um, and, and prepared to argue any substantive issue on the question of recoverability or limitation. I think my confusion sure. was due to the fact that both sets of submissions, including your skeleton, did seem to be engaging with, um, with the merits of the recoverability issue, but as a matter of fairness, speaking for myself, if you've only come prepared to argue the procedural point, then I would have thought that's all we should deal with. Yes, yes. I, I agree with you, Robert. I, I agree with you. I don't know what Justice Shamlan, do you agree with just with what Mr. Uh, Robert has just said? That we we hear the we we hear the the respondents' argument on or other parties' arguments on this particular issue only. Yes, whether. Sir whether uh, this is to be treated as an appeal where permission is required or it be treated as uh, challenging the um, or rather objecting to the reasons given by the judge. I'm not, I don't know how to word it, but I think we know, you know what I mean. So yeah. if that's uh, so, Robert, shall we go ahead with? Yeah, there was just a, I also wanted to ask both counsel really looking at the judgment what we have are a statement of conclusions on issues one, recoverability, two, limitation, etc. Uh, there doesn't seem to be on the record a formal order dismissing the claimant's application or striking it out. Uh, was are you aware of when is, whether any such order was made? We can just find one on the record. Yes, yeah. we, we, uh, we think on this side that um, insofar as there may be an, any order, it will be in the CMC um, uh, by the judicial officer. Um, we certainly are not aware of anything more formal. Yeah, the, the consequence being this, that if you have an order which uh, struck out or dismissed the claim, right, um, then um, a an application by the respondent to uphold that order on grounds other than the judge relied upon uh, is not an appeal because it's not seeking to change the order an appeal is only that which would seek to change the order either set it aside or or whatever um, the problem is that we have issues one two and three stated as conclusions and i think you and you and your argument have made the point that I, Somebody's cattle. Somebody's by cattle. Seeking, boiling. <laughs> by seeking to attack conclusion one as to recoverability, the respondents are really seeking to have a go at the judge's reasons um, uh, rather than any order. And the problem is there's no order. Now, maybe that can be sorted out and an order can in fact be made that enables all this to be regularised. But at the moment, we've got three findings in a sense that obviously lead to an inevitable conclusion in terms of an order. Okay. Yes, I mean we will we will we will need to check on the order. There has been a cost order made, as I understand it, as well on the costs of the action. So it's implicit that the action's been dismissed. But uh, I, I agree with I agree <laughs> with you that there doesn't seem to actually be a formal order, certainly not in the bundle that we have. But I think that's just a case of it not having been regularized rather than as I say, a, an order has been made for the cost of the action. So 
can we proceed on the procedural argument on the common assumption that there that there is an order or that if not an order will be made to give effect to the conclusions um, yes. from my perspective yes yeah okay. okay well that that then gets rid of our technical issue okay yes the order will say the appeal sorry the uh, the claims is dismissed that's what the right. order will say correct Reason? and it and it should also reflect the the costs yes. as well within that yeah yes of course Okay. Maybe the yes. parties agree the form of order without agreeing to it, in a sense, if I can say that. Okay. So, okay. Miss and 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 Lise and Lise, is that how you pronounce your name? Annalisa. 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 Okay. Annalisa. Yes, please, Annalisa. Can you continue? Yes. So we, what we say is, we don't need permission because we're seeking to uphold the judge's decision for a different or additional reason pursuant to RDC 44.75 subsection 2. And that says that we are 44.75 says a respondent may file and serve a respondent's notice, one, applying for permission to appeal, or two, asking the appeal court to uphold the decision of the lower court for reasons different from or additional to those given by the lower court. So you'll see that's an or provision. Um, so we say that we fall into point two, uh, subparagraph two there, that we are effectively asking this court to uphold the decision of the lower court to dismiss the claim for reasons different from or additional to those given by the lower court. 44.76 obviously says that if you wish to ask the appeal court to vary the decision of the lower court, then you do need permission to uh, appeal. Um, but we say we, we're not asking you to vary the actual order to dismiss the claim. And then 44.77 again reiterates that a respondent who wishes only to request that the appeal court upholds the decision of the lower court from reasons different from or additional to those given by the lower court does not appeal and does not require permission to appeal. So the crucial issue for you to decide is whether we are seeking to uphold the decision of the lower court for reasons different from or additional or alternatively to vary that decision uh, of the lower court in any way. And that ultimately depends on how you characterise properly characterise the uh, decision of the lower court. We say that the proper characterisation of the judge's decision is that the claim fell to be dismissed uh, because uh, the judge found it was time barred under Lebanese law. Um, we obviously say the claim should still be dismissed, um, but if we're wrong and the judge was wrong about Lebanese law, then it should be dismissed on this issue of recoverability. Um, the claimants haven't said in any detail why this analysis is wrong. All they've said in paragraph seven of their reply submissions, which is at page 44, is that the respondents have challenged the judge's finding that the losses claimed by the appellants are recoverable. They require permission for that challenge. And with respect, we say that that misses the point. The crucial issue as I've said, is the proper characterization of the judge's decision. So not the findings, but the decision. And we say that if you look in the context uh, of appeals within uh, the English context, the relevant decision refers to the result of the proceedings in the lower court. Um, and we've put into the bundle a couple of authorities from England in relation to that. I don't think it should be contentious, but I can take you to those if if it would assist the court. Um, but but we say this is very straightforward. We are seeking we are not seeking to vary the decision to dismiss the appeal, but we are seeking in the alternative to upholding the decision on the basis of limitation. We are saying that even if that the appeal against that was successful, the claim should still be dismissed 
because the judge should have found that the losses pleaded by the claimants are irrecoverable under Lebanese law. We say that the claimants are wrong if they're seeking to say that there are independent and freestanding decisions in respect of limitation and loss issues and that the losing party to each decision therefore requires permission to appeal. Um, that's not the correct characterization of what happened here. Um, the whole point of having the preliminary determinations here was that either of these two issues would, if determined in my client's favour, have the effect of bringing the entire claim to an end. Um, and the claimant's approach of saying we need permission erroneously seeks to characterise the preliminary issues ordered by the court as raising theoretical questions of academic interest without reference to the purpose of the exercise as far as the overall proceedings are uh, concerned. And as I say, you could test this by looking at what would have happened um, if we had sought permission to appeal, uh, but the claimants hadn't uh, sought to appeal. The appeal court would have said, don't be ridiculous. We're not we're not hearing that because you've won. In, in effect, you, it's a winner's appeal. Um, and that uh, has been set out in Reed and Montague Smith, which should be at page 3278 of the bundle. Anyway, uh, Ms Day, yeah. uh, the, um, the order you're seeking, uh, I, I don't know if you've actually formulated a direction or an order from the court, but presumably it would be something along the lines that the respondent's uh, notice is valid and will be heard at the hearing of the appeal. Correct. Correct. That's all, that's all, that's all, that's all I want today. Obviously, if you were to decide that I needed permission, I say I should have permission, but I, I don't know if the court wants to hear from Mr Fisher first on this procedural question. Um, Speaking for myself, it might be convenient to hear from Mr. Fisher on that point. On the okay. hypothesis that we're now operating on, Mr. Fisher, that there's an order dismissing the claims. Miss, um, uh, uh, before before you proceed to that, uh, Miss and and Lisa, and Lisa uh, is there a similar provision in the CPR on on 44.7 and 44.76? Uh, so the 44.75 and 76 follows the old rules, which so they're slightly different now under the English rules, but we've attached a couple of decisions if you want to have a look at them. Yeah, can, uh, can, can you tell us what, what does the decision say? There's the two cases you mentioned. Uh, I, we, I, yeah. I have a problem uh, getting the, I don't know, the others got it, but I couldn't get to the, to the authorities bundle on my... I have a laptop, I have a tablet, I have a knee, and still I cannot get access to that. I don't know what's wrong. So we, can, can we, you... yeah, we have we have two decisions that we've referred yes. to, C, uh, CIE Noga and uh, then Wolf and Trinity Logistics. What, what, and, what do they say? What do they say? Well, in effect, they say is you, you look at your uh, appealing that the relevant decision refers to the uh, result of the proceedings in the lower court. And I can take you to the paragraphs, but in particular, it's paragraph 27 of NOGA, which if you have the bundle, you'll find at page 3246. Can you, can you, can you read to, to me, please, for my benefit, my personal benefit? Yes, of course. Sorry, give me one minute. Uh, Maita, Maita, can you help me? Uh, which, what, which case number do I punch into the case management system? Which case number, Maita? Yes, it's TCD. TCD? Yeah, when I punch TCD 2030, I can't get the, the bundle. 003 2030, isn't it? Yeah, TCD 003 Yeah, but where is the, where is the authority's bundle? I cannot get to it. I don't know. I think it's at the end. I think these are at the end of the bundle that you had generally for the hearing. I got preliminary issues and appeal hearing bundle dated 21 October. But after that, I don't have anything else. I have only this. Is that it or something more? 
Um, or... Yes. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Sorry, I'm just trying to. Uh, I cannot get. I got. I got the 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 the, the submission by you. Yes. But it's it should... after that. After yeah, that, is it? It should be yes. I mean, the the decision of Wolf is helpful because it looks at um, that should be. I don't know if you can get to page three two five five, my lord. Let me try two three two five five view. Yes. <coughs> uh, three two five five open in tab. Three two five five. Six. Three two five five. Did you say? Three two five five. Three two five five. Three two five five. Okay, just continue. Yeah. So, uh, Trinity Logistics and Wolf is a decision. It's a 2018 decision of the Court of Appeal that cites uh, C C Noga, um, and the relevant part starts at paragraph 72. Okay, where cool. the judge, that's at page 3272, where the judge refers back to uh, C. Noga. And there he's uh, considering whether or not permission was needed to uphold a, an order made on additional ground. Now, I don't want to go into the facts of that case, but if you look at 73, paragraph 73 of Trinity Logistics, you will see that the Court of Appeal um, in C. Noga referred to a decision of lake and lake and then if you turn over to page 3273 at the end of letter a uh, the the court of appeal is reciting from sinoga to say if the decision of the court on the issue it has to try or the judgment or order of the court in relation to the issue it has to try is one which a party does not wish to challenge in the result it is not open to that party to challenge a finding of fact simply because it is one he or she does not like. And that is the proposition that what you're looking at is the result of uh, the the court below, not individual findings. And that must be right in that if I had come to this court before Mr Fisher's appeal and said, I don't like the judge's decision on recoverability, I'd like to appeal it, the court would have said, that's not going to change the result, so we're not hearing you. Mm. And that's put as simply as possible is why we say we do not need permission to appeal here. And we say that's supported by this these English authorities um, okay. in in relation to this. And CNOGA was decided under the old rules. Um, uh, paragraph 75 of Wolf contains the CPR rules, which form the basis for the RDC. So our current CPR rules are slightly different in wording. There's actually no change of substance, but you can see in paragraph 75 of Wolf, they are applying exactly the same um, rules as you have in the RDC. And that means you look at the result, not, not the individual findings that led to the result. Um, so, uh, my Lord, that's that's the authority that we rely on. So the English authority we say supports our position. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we will hear Mr. Fisher now. You're, you're, you're muted, Mr. Fisher. You're muted. May, may, not for long. Um, may, may it please my lords. Um, and so uh, our understanding of the position is different to my learned friends. Um, it, it, it seems to us that, um, that the um, issue that's being raised um, it is really, it, it amounts to a, a full frontal attack on the judge's uh, reasoning and the judge's finding. Uh, and the, the reasoning and the finding uh, underpin the result. And so uh, we're in a situation uh, whereby the appeal, uh, our appeal proceeds 
on the limitation point. And if um, uh, that uh, appeal uh, succeeds, then my learned friend raises uh, the recoverability issue. Um, uh, but in raising that issue, she needs, we say she needs permission to raise it because it amounts to a, a full, full attack on the, the judge's finding on the recoverability issue. And the reason we say that is because at the end of the day, um, the issues are inextricably linked. Um, the, um, the finding that the judge makes uh, turns on uh, or relates to the issue of whether or not um, there is a bar in Lebanese law uh, to the recoverability of damages uh, by a shareholder against an auditor. Um, and the uh, time that was spent uh, in evidence uh, in the, the lower court um, was directed very much at that issue. And the judge came to the conclusion on the evidence that um, there was no bar. And there are a, a number of ways in which my learned friend seeks to uh, undo that, um, whether in terms of looking at the construction of the Lebanese codes um, or, or, or looking at the point about whose loss it is, that it's company loss in her case, not an individual loss, and therefore there's a bar. But whichever way you look at it, um, she, she is saying that um, the uh, action cannot succeed because the damages are not recoverable. And the reason they're not recoverable um, is because there is a, a bar in Lebanese law. Now, the evidence before the court was absolutely clear that uh, that was not the case. So she lost on that. Um, uh, if she's going to succeed um, in uh, raising the recoverability issue on appeal, uh, we say that uh, there's nothing about different grounds here. It's all all, all the same stuff. Um, and she succeeds if she is able to on the basis of saying if effectively it comes to this, that uh, the learned judge in the lower court got it wrong. Um, and uh, that's why we say that it is a frontal at attack on uh, the uh, judgment and the reasoning, and therefore, for that reason, um, she needs a, a permission to appeal. Mr. Fisher, assuming, let's say, that permission is required, as you had just submitted, would you agree that permission be given today? Then we can proceed. Um, I don't think I'm in a position to... You are going to, to a permission to be given, the, you know, the test of whether it's likely to succeed, blah, 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 blah. If you just agree, I'll agree with permission to be given, then that's well, it. it was I, 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 I understand why you, why you asked that. Um, yes. I mean, from, from, from our perspective, no, I, I'm not in a position to make that agreement or concession. And, and let me tell you why. Um, it, it's for this reason. Um, the test that the court has to apply on the permission threshold is whether there's a real prospect of success. And we would go on and submit that um, there is no real prospect of success here on this recoverability issue. And the reason we say that is because the expert evidence from both sides was absolutely clear and clear that uh, there's no recoverability bar in Lebanese law. So that being so, we would say we can't uh, concede what my Lord puts to me um, because we do say that there is no reasonable prospect or real prospect of success. You, 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 can, you can concede, but subject to not conceding that they're going to succeed. Just for a pro technical procedure, I will concede, but I'm not saying that she's going to win the case. <laughs> uh, I, I, again, I understand, my Lord, where you're coming from. Um, mm. And I can come back at, at, at the court in, in this way. Um, obviously, um, in any appeal, one wants to focus the issues on those that uh, have a real prospect of success for either side. Uh, and we wouldn't want a, an appeal process being delayed or unnecessarily complicated uh, by raising an issue where there's a, a, a no real prospect of success. Uh, my lords, if you, if you were to tell me that you'd come to a view that you think that if this is raised, um, then the permission threshold is grant is is satisfied. Then of course I can say no more. Um, but um, I'm, uh, we certainly wouldn't concede it, um, and we would certainly say to you, looking at the evidence, that threshold is not passed. Mr. Fisher, can I ask you, um, in relation to forty four seventy five two of the rules, um, how is it that 
for uh, the respondent's notice raises anything other than a request to uphold the decision of the lower court for reasons different from those given by the lower court. That's the test we have to apply, isn't it? On the well, notice. Well, uh, uh, my Lord, I can only put it in this way, that um, we, we would say that in order for um, the uh, respondents to succeed in their appeal, um, that uh, they have to satisfy the court through one of their various routes that they seek to get to, that there is no, that there is a bar in, in Lebanese law preventing the shareholder from bringing an action. Um, that, that was very much the issue, that was the issue that they were running below. Understand that, but where's the merits test in 44.75.2? Oh, I see about my Lord's point. Um, the merits test, of course, comes in on the question of permission. It um, does, but let's assume that you can park that for the moment. But then I, I have no answer to that question because I, 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 see, I see what my Lord is saying. And in that situation, um, then it's very much an argument to be had at the substantive hearing. Yeah. Because I don't, speaking for myself again, I don't see how what permission to appeal would involve would be some what we used to call in some jurisdictions a cross appeal, which in other words seeks a variation of the orders uh, which have been made by the court below, or setting aside the orders made by the court uh, the court below in some way, um, and that's just not happening here because we're off on the hypothesis that the, the claim has been dismissed. Oh, yes, I, I understand. Actually, actually, I quite agree there because I just put my note here in 44.751, it is in fact what used to call cross appeal, isn't it? Is that that's what it meant to what I'm talking about 44.75 bracket one. Yeah, but the appellant is the uh, respondents are coming to us under 44.752. Yes. Which does depend on any yeah, threshold they have to, it's apart from not appeal in the proper sense. Mm. It's, it's not, not appeal, the... but they don't like the reason of the lower court, or rather the decision. Very... <laughs> okay. So, uh, can we rule on this, uh, just some that? What do you think? Should we, should we uh, just uh, rule that no position is not quite? Just, just, just before my lords do rule, my, my learned junior has quite rightly um, suggested that uh, we should just have a very quick look at paragraph 85 of the Wolf decision, which um, is at page 3275 of the bundle. And uh, anyway, can can you read it? I, I can't open 3275. Three, two, seven, five. Find page. I can't open. Don't do that. Thank you. Eighty-five. It's paragraph eighty-five, and uh, it's suggesting that um, it, it may not use the language of a cross appeal, but effectively, um, it's suggesting that there are circumstances, uh, and we would say we're one of them, where the uh, arguments um, um, amount to something that requires or amounts to a separate appeal. No, the, uh, I think that's still the case where there have been orders dismissing some claims and finding in favour of others. If you look at the, the uh, fifth sentence, where a court has dismissed one or more of the party's claims but has given judgment in its favour on another, and that party wishes to contend that the court wrong to dismiss the first claims. That's not a case of merely upholding the judgment. So that's a case where you seek a different order. And we're not in that territory. My, my Lord, I, I can't say any more on the point. Um, yeah. We just wanted to draw this paragraph to your attention you. before you determine the matter. Yeah, and, and just very briefly on that point, that that reinforces our point because if you have two different claims and the court dismisses one, you are seeking to challenge the result. Here, here we're the respondent, we're the defendant to a, to one claim that was dismissed, so it's a different situation, and that really underscores why it's the result of the claim that matters. Yeah. 
Okay. So shall we? What shall we? Uh, Justice Samlan, uh, Robert, shall we just uh, proceed on and rule that uh, no permission is uh, required for this purpose for the for four forty four point seven five two. Uh, yes, um, I, I mean, I, I proposed an order previously, Chief Justice, that the respondent's notice is valid and will be heard at the hearing of the appeal. Yes. And that's all we need to say, isn't it? Is that what is required from us, uh, Ms. Annalisa? Yes, I, that would that I think that would cover it. Then then it's clear it can be argued. Um, at the at the appeal. Anything else that we you need from us? Um, the only other thing is that I would ask for my costs of today. This is a point that has been taken by the claimant. We say they were plainly wrong on it, and the Wolf decision shows they were wrong. And we have incurred co significant costs of today, um, and we would seek our costs therefore of today, having succeeded in showing it's not something we need permission on. No, I have to say we would respectfully resist that. Um, it, it seems to us that the we would submit respectfully the the proper order is to reserve the costs. The, this matter uh, is a matter that uh, the court will be looking at in detail at the substantive hearing, and that's the time when somebody, whoever is adjudicating, will be in a better position to make a decision on the question of costs. Yeah, but you can also treat this as cost thrown away, you know, it's, it's just uh, nothing to do with the main uh, appeal. It's just, this is just one off issue. Well, what do you think, judge, uh, judge, uh, judges? What do you think? I'm discussing it openly. <laughs> 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 nothing to hide. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to go back to the other myself, with, with, all, with all due respect to contrary arguments, I don't think... Uh, the uh, uh, I don't think the objection was uh, well. I think maybe there are two arguments in this. The, the there was a point to the objection because there was no order. Um, uh, but um, uh, at the same time, uh, uh, the basis upon which this uh, application was uh, resisted or the, the notice was resisted uh, seems to have been on a. Um, have some misapprehension of the impact of uh, order 4475 uh, and its content um, which uh, with respect should have been should have been apparent and uh, i would have thought that uh, a, a cost order might be appropriate in those circumstances perhaps to be assessed by the registrar if not agreed Judge well from my point from my point of view i will i would rather to reserve the cost for uh, to be uh, to be cost in the case. Just if I can just respond on that point, it shouldn't be reserved because this is a self-contained issue. It won't be reconsidered at the appeal stage. So the appeal stage will consider the merits of the of the of our of our appeal. And um, this is this is a separate, completely separate point that you will have determined today. And the appeal court at the final hearing won't be looking at this again. So it is something that's been determined in our favour today. But, but if I may just come back on that and say that's yes, a particularly sure. harsh view to take, because uh, you know the bottom line is that your your position, um, Mr. Abraham, my learned friend, um, was very much to put in a, a respondent's notice. And so to that extent, we um, responded to that. Uh, and so uh, uh, we would say respectfully, cost reserved is the right order. Looks like no, the ball's but, oh, just... Oh, sorry, sorry. I beg your pardon again. Sorry, uh, Robert, what do you say? It looks like the ball's in your court, Chief Justice. <laughs> yeah, but because uh, I'm inclined to agree with the request or the application by Miss and Lisa, because this is one off matter, it's been decided, it's not going to be raised at the PIB anymore. That is not going to be right. I mean, which, whichever way it turns out, the appeal, the decision is this application is dismissed. You know, it's not as if you can. It, what, what are you going to determine that if you win, that this uh, the cost is goes to you, or 
No, it's, it's independent. It's, it's uh, one, as I say, it's a one of cost thrown away, whatever you call it. Not thrown away, but it's not the right context. But it's, I'm inclined to just say that cost to the respondent for today. Whereas Judge Samlan wants to reserve for the uh, Judge uh, Robert, you, you agree with me, Robert? Or you agree yeah. with Samlan? I, 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 I preemptively agreed with you, Chief Justice. Okay, two to one. <laughs> two to one. Two to one in your favour, Miss Analyst. Order in your favour. Thank you. To be, be assessed by the registrar. If I can see the judicial process at work, it's like sausages being made. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that all? That's everything. Thank you to your Lordship. Thank you very much, Mr. Fisher. Thank you very much for your submission and uh, helping us to arrive at uh, what I hope to be is a fair decision by all of us. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. The best. How's the weather in England? Well, uh, it's, it's a bit. It's been very nice. It looks a bit grey today, but I'm. You know, you never know with English weather. But no, <laughs> Dubai uh, is hot. It, now. Dubai is very hot now. Dubai. Yes, I was in Dubai in March. I also couldn't believe how much building there's been there. It's it's you know it's very vibrant and busy. Yeah. Um. So long may that continue. Kuala Lumpur is hot. It's very yeah. very hot. Now. <laughs> Thank you very much again. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Goodbye. You. Bye.